Hey everyone, and welcome back to the galaxy. Today we will be learning how to use the Unified Transform tool. This tool combines many of GIMP's transform tools into one. Let's get into it. In my toolbox, I'm going to select the Unified Transform tool. Depending on the type of element you want to transform, you will change the mode here at the top of the tool options. To select a layer, I will use the first option titled Layer. But you can use this tool to transform selections, paths, and even the whole project. I will then select the element I want to transform on my active layer. First, let's look at how to use the different transform points on this tool. As you watch me place my cursor over different points on the transform matrix, see how the cursor icon changes to the corresponding tool. Placing our cursor within the transform matrix, we can click and drag our element around. Placing our cursor outside the transform matrix allows us to rotate. The large square boxes on each corner and side allow you to resize. The diamonds inside the corner squares allow you to change the perspective of the element. And the white diamonds on each side provide shearing options. There's an extra dialog box that will appear with this tool with three quick actions. To reset the appearance of the element and matrix you are transforming, click Reset. Readjust can help when you have zoomed into your project where you can't see the transform matrix. If I zoom in and click Readjust, I can now visually see the matrix again and use it to make adjustments. Transform simply applies the transformation you have created. And you can also hit enter on your keyboard to finalize. Now let's look at some more tool options. Right below the transform options is direction. Selecting between the two changes the direction your tool works. Normal will conform the element in the direction you are transforming it. Corrective reverses the direction of the transformation, and this can come in handy when correcting the rotation of an image. Interpolation affects the quality of the transformation. Often you can leave this set to linear as it creates good quality results. I've linked more information about these options in the description if you are interested. Clipping deals with the edges of your element as they reach outside the boundary of their layer. Often leaving this to adjust is satisfactory, but notice how the image changes as I transform it with these different options selected. Again, the link in the description can provide you with a more in-depth look at these options if you are interested. Moving below clipping, we have some tick boxes that deal with the preview options for this tool. By having Show Image Preview toggled on, as we manipulate the transform matrix, we can see a real-time preview of our transformation. You can change the opacity of this preview by editing this slider bar. Composited preview will allow us to still see a real-time preview, even if our layer has a blending mode option applied, or if multiple layers are linked. Originally, if I apply a blending mode to this layer, and have composited preview unchecked, as I make transformations, the blending mode disappears. But if I click transform, 
we can see it again. With composited preview checked, the blending mode remains as we transform. If we check preview linked items and link layers together by clicking right next to the eye on two layers, as we transform, we see a preview of both. Checking synchronous preview will simply create a smoother preview. Under the preview options, we have a dropdown titled Guides. From this dropdown, we get different options for guides that will show up right in the transform matrix. Notice how it conforms to the matrix as I move it around. Continuing down, we have three different options, all with corresponding tick boxes. First, let's look at Constrain. Constrain will limit the movement of your transformations. With Scale and Shear selected by default, notice how these transformation types behave. The aspect ratio for Scale remains fixed. And Shear can only complete a linear transformation. If I select Rotate, notice how the degrees of rotation are restricted. Unticking these allows us to create unconstrained transformations. The From Pivot and Pivot options deal with this circle with the cross in the center of your matrix. You can click and move this around and transformations will change depending on where this point is in the matrix. From Pivot allows you to change how some of those transform tools behave. For instance, if I move the pivot point to the bottom right corner of the matrix and select the scale tick box, notice how it scales around this point. Finally, we can define how we want the pivot point to behave. With Snap selected, the pivot point will snap to the center and sides of the transformation matrix. Selecting Lock should lock the pivot point in its current position, but this option doesn't seem to work when selected. And that's it! You've now mastered the Unified Transform tool. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, consider subscribing for more awesome content. Let us know if you found this tutorial helpful by liking this video and leaving us a comment. Thanks for watching.